Welcome to Uriah Heep, the Magician's Podcast. I'll be covering every studio song the band has recorded and every bonus track that I can find. Each week we'll go over a new song from the beginning to where they are currently, and as they keep adding albums, I'll keep adding shows. Let the deep dive party begin. In the magic garden, some were singing, some were dancing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to season two of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. My name is Scott Haskin, and I am your host on this fan base podcast supported by Uriah Heap. Thank you guys very much. And we're going to get into Salisbury. Every album is a new season. And I'll change things up a little bit. No, I really won't. But this season, we are actually going to have our first contest. Going to be coming down the line in a few episodes. But since I'm doing like four episodes a week now, it's going to be like next week. So this is the start of the week. This is the Monday episode. And Monday is my gratitude episode, where I talk about all the people that have contributed, helped, supported, all that kind of thing. Aside from the band, who's, who's been fantastic in their management. Uh, got some exciting stuff today. Well, you know what that sound means, or maybe you don't. That means that we have a new patron on our Patreon account. Thank you and welcome Peter Voss at the $3 tier. Very happy to have you aboard. And thank you for sharing your Uriah Heap story with me. It's very, very inspiring. And, you know, I love people that have like, you know, I was into the band And then I kind of lost a little bit. And then I got back to the band. Like there was something that always said that this music was very special to me. You know, we all get distracted. There's so many things out there, not just life stuff, but so much music and movies and different things. And, you know, we can only ingest so much in our lifetimes. And it shows, especially too, in the Facebook groups, I see people posting over and over these different songs that they like. Here's what I'm listening to. Here's what I'm sitting down and enjoying with my morning coffee. And it just goes to show what a testament to the music there is and and the support that this band gets. It's really awesome. I love it. And, you know, being a big fan myself, obviously, I certainly understand uh, why everyone loves this music so much. And hopefully, and and honestly, we are. We've we've picked up people that have heard of Uriah Heap, wasn't really familiar with the band. And uh, they've written to me and said, hey, thanks for doing the show. I really like this band. I'm so glad to learn about them. So you know, it's uh, it's great for the fans that have already existed and it's picking up new fans. And I really appreciate everybody's support. And speaking of support, I also want to throw out a thank you to our $1 patron, the inaccessible Airtight Gravesite. Thank you for your contribution. Thanks, guys, both of you. And I really appreciate uh, all the help. You know, every little bit goes right into the podcast and just helps me maintain it and make it a little bit better. And uh, we're just going to keep getting better as we go, I hope. And if not, I'm sure someone will tell me. And of course, it is Monday. And I told you guys last week I was going to read my full list of thanks on the Monday episode so they don't get too redundant for you guys that are binging the podcast or, you know, listening every day. Uh, Don't want you to feel like you have to fast forward to anything because you've heard it because it could change. There are new people that I meet, uh, great people that uh, have been writing to me. But most importantly, uh, I want to thank these people, my graphic artist, Scott Lazinski, who did the logo, both the black uh, logo that you now see on Facebook for this new season and the white logo that you've seen before. Audionamics, I will do not, I will not do, I will do not, I will not do a podcast without you guys. The instant dialogue cleaner is a big part of what helps make this show sound good, at least my voice and the, getting rid of the background noise and all that from computer fans and and things that go on in the world. I live right by an airport. So that's uh, always an additional challenge. But as you can hear, you don't hear any planes or helicopters or commotion or anything like that. Sounds very clean. Thank you, Audionamics. Of course, I want to talk about my brothers at the Deep Dive Podcast Network, who have been absolutely wonderful in helping promote the show and and really uh, supportive to me. Uh, Nate and John at the Deep Purple Podcast. Simple Man at Skinner Reconsidered. Terry T-Bone Mathley at T-Bone's Prime Cuts, soon to have his other show coming out, which I'm very excited about. Rye at Sabbath Bloody Podcast, Paul, Joe, and David at The Lap of the Pods. And definitely, if you guys are into historical concert information for Deep Purple and Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, check out gottahearemall.com. And lastly, the band's manager, Ace, has his own uh, podcast on Stitcher. And you can also uh, see his other videos on YouTube. 
and it is called Ace on Music. All the links are in the show notes. You guys can check those out. Uh, just click on them. It'll take you right to the show, except for the uh, T-Bones Prime Cuts, because that new show is not out yet, but it will be. And as soon as it is, I'll get that link out as well. So let's talk about uh, this album, because there are uh, a couple of different versions of it. There are the There's the UK version, which I believe is the one that had the tank on the front cover. And then there's the American Canadian version that had the red cover with the sort of uh, weird beastie creature ripping his flesh off. And uh, the only thing that I was able to find out about it was actually uh, a- an article that I found on the internet somewhere. I don't remember exactly where it was, but it says the front cover depicted the British chieftain tank, which, con- t- uh, which connects to the title as Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire, England, uh, which is a military training area. Now, I don't know that much about geography. I'm not anywhere near an expert. I could barely even find all of our states on a map here in the U.S., although I kind of know most of them now. But uh, when it comes to England and and the territories and different provinces and that, I really don't know much about it. But I do know that Wiltshire actually is very well known for the appearance of multiple crop circles and those uh, really weird horses that would appear. They were like uh, white horses that would appear in the fields. I don't know anything about them, but uh, that is one bit of uh, notoriety that that area has that I'm aware of. Not sure how close that is to Stonehenge, but uh, definitely over in that closer than here in Las Vegas, for sure. Um, Now, the American release was on Mercury Records, which featured a different cover design. That's the man tearing out his own skin, um, as did the original Canadian pressings. And then subsequent Canadian pressings uh, then switched to the United Kingdom artwork, which was the uh, the tank. So that's really about all I know about the cover. I know that I had the one with uh, with the guy on it. And the, the song lineup is completely different. Now, I put Bird of Prey on the Very Heavy, Very Humble season. It also could have gone on this season as well. I was kind of anxious to get to it, and it appeared as a bonus track on that CD, so I thought I would just put it with that season. But for uh, for us here in the United States that had that Red Cover album, that song actually was song... I can't remember which one it was now, but it was, it was on this version of the album. This uh, version also started with High Priestess, and since that's the one that I'm familiar with, I actually uh, rearranged the tracks a little bit, so I'm starting with High Priestess. It, it is such a great uh, start to the album. And I think it might have been Bird of Prey was the start of the UK album. I'm not sure. But uh, it, it's just a great starter. It's full of energy and power and just gives you the, the tone that really just sets the sound of the album. Because this, this was written, obviously, more cohesively than the first album was, which was some tracks recorded as Spice, some as Uriah Heap, different members playing on it. This is all one solid lineup, all written uh, at, at the same time. So it, it definitely has a more cohesive um, overall feel to it. And uh, to me, this is such a personally a, a very important album because I not only I mean, obviously, I enjoy it, but I learned a lot about the harmonies, the music, musicianship, um, the sound, the writing style, like so much uh, for me came from this album. And so that's one of the reasons I'm really excited to bring it to you guys. In fact, this album was one of the reasons that I I really kind of wanted to do the show to begin with, because I was just going to review it as a, a regular album on my other podcast. And I thought, um, you know, if I am able to get a hold of somebody and if this idea gets approved, then obviously I want to save it for that. If it doesn't get approved, then I'll just do it as a regular review on my other show. So I'm glad I can actually dive into the individual songs and uh, and give you a little bit more depth. So the other thing before we get started on the song is I just wanted to let you know that Mick is not with us this this episode. Uh, He's got a lot going on. He's managing a band. He's got, you know, they're working on the album. He has a life outside of this podcast. So he won't necessarily be with us every episode. Uh, If he's able to catch up with some clips later on, then I'll do a special uh, clip episode for his stuff. Uh, We'll figure it out. But he'll be here as he can. Um, Really excited always to hear his opinions. And, uh, and and it's going to feel a little bit empty when he's not here. But, uh, but you know, he's busy. He's doing important things, things that are going to benefit us later. So it's OK. It's all good. And uh, now we're going to get into the song. I'm just going to start it and uh, give you guys the feel of Welcome to Salisbury.
I love this uh, feeling like I'm being lulled into something here, but knowing that they're, you know, a hard rock band, I know that it's kind of like a full sense of security. You're just kind of waiting for that thing to come. But there are some beautiful slides in this part. I really love the the sound of it. It just has like a a real uh, entrancing feel to it. And you just kind of have to be like, I wonder where the song goes next. But it's kind of like a couple Metallica songs. Like when you listen to Battery or Fight Fire with Fire, you know that those little classical intros that they do are going to lead into something much heavier. And I think even the first time I heard this song, I was like, all right, but where is this going? Like, What's coming next? So let's just find out. So right off the bat, there's a lot to unpack right here. We're just getting to a minute into the song, but there's so much that happened. That was a blistering little solo bit from Mick and uh, some really good rhythm guitar to back that up. It almost kind of blended together a little bit. The solo was only slightly louder than the rhythm side, which was kind of interesting. It it almost like it was springing from the same tree. And uh, you got some really strong drums and bass coming in. Uh, Just a great start right off the bat. And then just starting in with that really powerful vocal from David, uh, you know, like I said, you know, this song, you know, when you've got those little nice things, you, you're just being guided into a much bigger world and they just kicked it right off. I love the beat through this. Uh, it, it, it's, you know, it's not just a straight beat, which would have been OK, but this definitely made it more interesting. It made it feel a little bit more shuffly, which uh, which I like a really great way to start an album, honestly. <laughs> Lots of really good, thick, strong guitar sounds in here. Um, You know, great bass playing, great beat to back it all up. Uh, Obviously, you know, they're back with the harmonies right off the bat. So, you know, just starting this album, you know that you're listening to your Uriah Heap album, because if you learned anything from the first album, all the trademarks are right here. You got a groove and bass line, strong guitars, great harmonies, powerful vocal line. Um, Haven't heard the keyboards yet, but you know that that's probably going to come because you see that Ken Hensley's on the album. So uh, really just uh, a great introduction to say, here's we are, here's who we are, here's the sound, we're defined for this album now, and it will carry through to the rest of the album. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I could use a little bit more drums in this mix. Maybe something that uh, thumps a little bit more on my chest area and uh, kind of drives it. Because I think the bass line's really great. The drums are great. But I think if they if the drums match the bass line a little bit better, I think it would be a little more powerful. I always thought that this mix was a little bit um, thin as far as that went. But the song is still great. And really, you know, when we hit the chorus, wow, the, there's so many harmonies and high parts going on. It's really just beautifully crafted. And and there's the classic thing you hear some things are hard panned um, to the left, the guitar solo, uh, at least in my headphones, it's hard panned to the left. And then, um, you know, that that typical huge reverb with the harmonies as it goes into the next part, whereas there's less reverb during the vocal. And, uh, you know, very classic of the, of the heap sound. You know, these were these were mixed in the same studio, I believe, as as the last album. 
So that's kind of how they did things. That was part of the Uriah Heep sound. It was part of the sound of the time, even though some were really kind of moving away from that a little bit in the 70s. But uh, yeah, some really good stuff here. There were so many points I wanted to stop and talk about how great this solo work is by Mick Box. And, you know, it's just a minute and 30 all the way to the end of straight solo. So there really isn't a a good point for me to stop it and point anything out. But what was really cool, if you heard it, was you've got the rhythm guitar going, which is great, very important. It keeps up with the rhythm section. You've got some great playing by Keith Baker, uh, got that shuffle feel to it, uh, really interesting uh, snare work. Then you've got uh, Paul Newton on bass, who's just keeping a great groove, very solid, really energetic. And then, um, you know, you've got the lead guitar solo, which is over in the left ear. And it is just it's powerful. You know, the whole time through all of that, it's very powerful, but still in context. And then in the right ear, you've got some other notes that are coming in and they're kind of uh, giving little accents and the pitches are getting higher as the song goes on. And it's just this really beautiful melodic blend. And through the whole thing, you're like, okay, is this going to stop at some point? Are they just going to stop the song and then maybe do some vocal harmonies like you would you come come to expect? Are they going to go back to a a verse or repeat a verse or is it going to be a chorus? Like what's going to happen? But the solo just takes us all the way out through the song, which is really it's interesting because it's such a long passage. You know, the song's only three minutes and 40 some seconds. So to have a minute and a half of that be uh, the solo that just goes all the way to the end is really an interesting construction, but it works. And, you know, only musicians that are playing at the top of their game like these guys are at this point, um, they're really the only ones that can pull something like that off. Because if you're if you're not delivering, it's not going to be there and everybody has to be delivering and, and you just hear it hit on every point going through this song. So, uh, you know, as always, it's a, it's another thumbs up for me. I probably sound like I'm biased. I'm sure there's something I'm not going to like besides a, an engineer's choice and mix at some point. But, you know, everything I've heard so far, and these are, of course, songs that I know um, very well, I should say, as opposed to songs I've heard only a couple of times. So uh, it'll be interesting as we go forward. But But certainly this is a great song, a great album opener for those of you that had this version of the album. And uh, if I'm right that Bird of Prey was the other album opener, then, uh, you know, you guys already know how I feel about that song. That would be another great way to start an album. But you get everything in this song. You get the harmonies, you get the strong solos, you get the the groove and rhythm and the really interesting bass playing that's not just playing the root notes. You got a drum beat that's not just a straight beat. You've got uh, powerful vocal, everything here. Uh, a really nice lulling intro with some slides instead of bends. Uh, just Just a great song. It's got everything and it really sets the tone for how this band has defined themselves at this point. They're an album in, now they have a solid lineup, and now they've written a cohesive album. And this is just a, a, a great example. It's kind of like, to me, in a way, it's like the overture. You know, it's it's not an overture in the classic sense of you're getting a little piece of every song so that you'll recognize it later in repeated themes like you would in a musical or a rock opera. But it's it's an overture to me of the sound and the style of the band. 
And uh, I think it's just a great way. It's a kick-ass way to start an album. So uh, that's it for this one, guys. We're through our first song already in season two. Gosh, these go so fast. You can follow the show on Facebook at facebook.com slash Uriah Heap Podcast. You can also follow us on Twitter at Heap Podcast, where we occasionally have some nice, lively discussions. There are, uh, there are pictures on our Instagram page at Uriah Heap Podcast. And of course, you can always email me at UriahHeapPodcast at gmail.com. Now, all those things are in the show notes. You don't have to remember them. You don't even have to write them down. Just go to scotthaskin.com, click on the Uriah Heap Podcast link, and all that will be there on that page. You can also go into the seasons. I have a link for each season. And then inside of that, a page for each episode with a mini player that has just that episode on it. And then there's the main player on the main site. So I try to make it as accessible uh, for everyone as I can and try to make all the uh, information uh, available as, as easily as possible because that's a lot of links and stuff to remember. If you're driving around listening to this, maybe you listen to it on your commute. I know some people do. And um, you know, you're not going to want to pull over the car and definitely don't be writing or trying to do anything while you're listening and driving your car. We need you first up. Don't do that. So that's it for this one, guys. We'll see you tomorrow for the next song. Thanks for joining me. Cheers. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Uriah Heap, the Magician's Podcast. If you have enjoyed this show, please consider going over to Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast outlet, leaving a rating or a review. Be sure to subscribe to make sure that you are notified when new episodes are available. Please be sure to share this podcast with your fellow Uriah Heap enthusiasts and anyone who you think would like Uriah Heap, which should be everyone. And if you are so inclined, please feel free to contribute to the Patreon account. And if you are not a Patreon subscriber, you can also pay through the PayPal link on the website listed in the show links below. I would also like to thank Uriah Heap for their very generous support of the show. And thank you guys for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Happy days. <laughs>